Sometimes, the student doesn't do any work, and when they don't, it's important that we give them a zero in their grade book, because when they see the impact that that has on their average, that's just like a wake-up call, and now they know. You need to get your act together, and you got to start handing your stuff in, and put a little more energy into this, and get her done. Or does it actually do that? It seems to me that that's overweighing the amount of work that a number's got to do. The number's supposed to both measure or tell me or my parents um, what I've learned as well as how I behave while I go about learning it. There's no question that learning behaviors impact student achievement. But those are two separate things. So in our new report card, there's a separate entry for learning behaviors and for grades. And ideally what would happen is if a kid, or what would happen is, is if, if a student doesn't turn in any work, then the grade you can give them, because honestly, you can't say that the kid knows nothing because you don't know that. You don't know what the kid knows. So the best you could say is incomplete. I cannot assess. And then in the learning behaviors, you can make a comment about students not handing in work, consistently late to class, whatever it is. When you give them a comment, you can say, it's difficult for me to say what strengths the student has because they haven't demonstrated their learning to me. Or, or maybe they have. Maybe they have demonstrated one assignment that they did well, but they haven't done well in subsequent assignments. And what they need to work on, their next step, is to buckle down and get their work handed in. We need to separate the information that we give students and that we give teachers and that we give parents about what a student has learned or hasn't learned. A study I've probably talked about before, uh, and it's been replicated, where a class was taught something and they were given, they were tested on it and in three groups, and one group was given comments, another group was given grades, another group was given both comments and grades. Then based on the feedback, they were taught some more and then retested on it. So which group showed the most growth? The one that got comments, the one that got grades only, or the one that got both? Many people think the one that got both. Some people rightly guess that it's the ones that got comments only show the most growth. But what was most interesting about that study was that the kids that got grades and grades plus comments had no, no statistical difference in their achievement on the second test. We know that as soon as you put a number on kids' work, that ends learning. And it's cruel to put numbers on kids' work while they're in the process of learning. It does make sense to evaluate them at the end of learning. Zeros aren't helping anybody. Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong. Push back.